everyone, welcome to learningfilemaker.com and this video is on SSL or point-to-point -point encryption between your FileMaker server and your FileMaker clients, whatever those clients are, whether they're pro clients, go clients, or maybe web direct clients. That's what this video covers. Now, once again, to bring extra expertise to these videos, I've gone out and we're talking to some very special FileMaker experts in the community. And while I know quite a bit about the FileMaker platform, I frequently go out and bring in people that know more about specific topics than I do. And today I wanna to welcome Klaus Levent, right? Klaus, do I have that right? Yep. Yeah, that's right. Now, Klaus is from Denmark, and he's got a company called Data Maniacs, is what I look at it, but it's not Data Maniacs, it's Data Manics, right? Yeah. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your company. We have done uh, a lot of different things, and we don't really specialize in a, in a specific branch. We have, um, like I told you, uh, s uh, clients that is... Uh, from just a couple of people in the company into uh, uh, international uh, pharmaceutical companies with more than 120,000 employees, so everything in between. I do have done a lot of uh, things with external devices and integrating with FileMaker, but um, that's a whole other area. Well, I know that you've spoken at the FileMaker Developer Conference in 2014. Are you speaking there again this year in 2015? Yes, I am. What's your topic this year? Uh, at the current time, it's super secret. Oh, well, then we can't talk about it. It's top secret. If we if we told everyone, we'd have to kill them, and that would be a lot of people to kill. So we're not going to do that today. Yeah. Um, no. But we are going to talk about some some important security uh, things, which uh, which are public. But uh, so let's go ahead and dive into that. So first off, uh, recently there's been uh, announcements by FileMaker that FileMaker has kind of changed the way they do their SSL certificates. And FileMaker has historically, I'm going to frame this a little bit, FileMaker has historically had this checkbox in their FileMaker server software, which was this SSL encryption from the server to the client, right? And that was a, a self-signed certificate. Can you explain what that means? Well, self-signed is, is uh, well, Basically, the certificate is um, just like a passport, so you can say that you are who you are, and uh, people can believe that that is true, but in order to make a proof, you have a passport. In the same way, uh, servers are using certificates that validates that the server is who it says it is. So. For self-signed certificates, well, it, it basically, the word says it all. It says that I have signed my own certificate stating that I am who I am. So can you trust that? No, pretty much not, because everybody could create a self-signed certificate. So what FileMaker has done in the past is basically they, they used the self-signed certificate where the FileMaker server says, well, I am the FileMaker server that you're communicating with, you can trust that uh, because I say so. Uh, and because they are communicating with FileMaker Pro or FileMaker Go clients, they are basically in the same loop. So it was kind of trusted, uh, you could say. So FileMaker effectively created their server product with the checkbox for SSL, which used a self-signed certificate. And then the FileMaker Pro and Go clients since FileMaker built both sides of that equation, right? They built the server and the client. They knew yeah. to trust each other, right? And they knew yeah. what to look for, so they knew they were trusted. So it worked pretty well, but, and so this has been this way for a number of versions of FileMaker. And so I guess at this point, FileMaker has determined that there's a problem with this, I guess, right? Is that your understanding? Well, it's it's difficult to to guess what FileMaker thinks and what they are saying, but at least from uh, from the release of FileMaker 13, uh, they notched up the security overall in the in the platform. And from my understanding, I I'm not quite sure what the documentation said exactly when the uh, FileMaker 13 was released, but you were able to install a custom certificate, and 
if you read about uh, certificates and SSL from other sources than directly from FileMaker, you would uh, know that it is uh, you need to have a custom certificate in order to have a valid encrypted connection between the client and the server. Uh, so it's actually not very new, but what's new is that they fixed the bug and I think in order to encourage the users to enhance the security, I think they are encouraging us to use a custom certificate. But I don't think it's very new in this. Now, my understanding is that you've always been able to get a custom certificate, which is a third-party uh, certificate authority that's going to validate your custom certificate, which is the highest level of uh, security that you can get in a certificate. It's much better than FileMaker's built-in self-signed certificate. And it's always, that capability has always been there. But before FileMaker's, FileMaker frequently gave the impression that the built-in self-signed certificate was good enough. And I think recently with this latest release and this latest uh, update, they're saying that the self-signed certificate now is only for testing and mm -hmm. for production use. They are encouraging you to go out and get a official custom certificate from an external certificate authority. Yeah, you could say so. Uh, in my opinion, it has always been that well, common knowledge that uh, you, you should get a, a custom certificate, uh, even if FileMaker was not publicly uh, stating it. So, well, I don't think it's very new here, but but if you look at this uh, small drawing I, I, I did, you have the certificate, and and like I said, it's it's just like having a passport that states who you are, but if you create your own passport, how can we trust that if you have a an authority issuing your passport, well, that makes it much more trustworthy. And that's why we are using the uh, uh, certificate authorities to, to get a, a signed certificate. Excellent. That's basically why you should have this. And, and you could say um, the way the uh, encrypted connections works is that the client is connecting to the server and requesting uh, an encrypted connection. But at the handshake, it is asking to uh, verify the server so it knows, so the client knows if the server is actually who it, who it says it is. And uh, if the certificate is a custom certificate that is issued by a, an authority, well, then the uh, client knows that, uh, that this passport, if you would say this certificate, is valid and, and the server is who it says it is. So that's the whole idea of uh, the certificate that is validating that the uh, encrypted connection is established between the client and the server that you think you're uh, connecting to. Well, quick question here. The way your diagram goes is it looks like FileMaker server is sharing the same certificate that the web server on the computer is using too. Yep. And, I, and I know the web server is also serving either the custom web pages, which would have PHP or XML, or they're hosting WebDirect, right? Which is that new exactly. te technology that came out with 13, right? So Yeah, exactly. Well, the uh, drawing here is uh, pretty much to explain the standard process uh, where you have a one machine deployment. Here, when, when we are importing the uh, custom certificate, the signed certificate we get from the certificate authority, then the import command of FileMaker server installs the certificate and make changes in the web server's setup so that the web server will also use the same certificate. Uh, it, that way you don't have to use uh, two certificates, one for the FileMaker server and one for the web server. And that is, is smart when you have a one machine deployment. Uh, you could also have the web server sitting on a totally other machine and just connect to the FileMaker server. 
provided that, uh, for example, the uh, VPE engine is also sitting on the same machine as the uh, FileMaker server. And in that case, you can configure uh, virtual domains and uh, install different certificates for different virtual domains on the web server as well. And then the uh, web client, either uh, via custom web publishing or web direct, could connect uh, to different domains and have those uh, validated with their own certificate. You could also have on the same one machine deployment install several certificates for the web server. If you are using virtual domains where you have uh, mycompany.com and then you have another domain saying uh, mydomain.org or whatever it is and then you could install several uh, certificates for, for those domains. So, uh, But that is very customized setup and it's not directly supported by FileMaker because it's pretty complicated. Well, but it's possible. Yeah, let me ask a quick question here. And this came up on one of the FileMaker uh, support forums actually last night this morning for me. Someone was asking, well, are the certificates attached to an IP address or are they attached to a domain? And I, I yeah, they, you mentioned this briefly just now, but you went by it real fast. So can you clarify that point? Yeah, well, a certificate is validating against the domain name. So you need to own the domain name that uh, that you are uh, setting up the certificate for. It is actually possible to set it up against a an IP address, but uh, Wim de uh, just answered in in that uh, thread that as of November the 25th, I think, uh, 2015, it will not be possible anymore because it's not considered secure because an IP address is not something you as a end user or a company can own. The IP address is the property of uh, ISPs. So the domain name is something you can own and that's why you need to purchase the certificate and, and set it up against the domain name that you own. So to clarify here, I know a lot of people have FileMaker servers and the FileMaker server has a static address but they don't necessarily put a www anything on that FileMaker server. So really, I think one of the revelations here is that if you're going to do SSL encryption on the FileMaker server, they're going to need to have some sort of www something on that yeah. server before they go down the road of the SSL. Even if it's www123, you know, pretty dog or something stupid, 123 in their, their yeah. company name or something. Whatever. Yeah, well, well, we are using uh, subdomains for our servers. So, um, so we have the the top level domain, and uh, you'll see when we uh, get to the uh, installation of the uh, SSL. But our domain for our servers is uh, levent.com, which is actually my last name, and then uh, the servers is called LCS 010203, and so on. So. I have the same top level domain but I have several subdomains for that one so therefore I just needed to purchase the uh, domain name levent.com and then I'm in charge of uh, deploying subdomains and uh, any uh, every time we uh, buy a new server we just give it a, a new number in in the order that is uh, not used yeah um, I... and put in a, a certificate on that my team does the same thing. And, and just to clarify for everyone who's not, you know, super familiar with this, is that once you own a domain, you can add additional subdomains with your uh, DNS provider uh, essentially for free. There's no, you're not purchasing additional domains. So if you have, uh, you know, for example, that one right there, you can set up a subdomain like this right here. And there's no additional charge for you to add these because you already paid for Levent.com and adding LCS1, LCS0203, there's no charge for that. You bought the first one at the top and then you add subdomains and those are free. So I know if you're technical, you understand this. If you're fairly a non-technical person, this is new for you and that's why we're explaining all this. So exactly. moving along. Yeah. That's basically the certificate uh, and how it works. There was also another question saying why is the list of supported 
certificate so short that uh, FileMaker is supporting. While we know there's uh, a lot of different certificates out there, well, in order to answer that, it's because the client needs to know who could be a certificate authority. And the client knows that by having a list of uh, certificate authorities. That's what is also referred to as root level uh, authorities. So just without getting into very deep technical stuff, it is uh, the way that the uh, client, <coughs> the uh, web browser and the operating system knows which root level certificate authorities there is to choose from and which types of certificates they are providing. So that's why a web client or web browser can validate against a lot of different uh, certificates. But when it comes to FileMaker and especially FileMaker Go, uh, the FileMaker Go needs to have included a, a list of supported certificate authority root levels. And that's why there is a list of uh, which uh, certificate authorities is supported by FileMaker. And when the list is not very big for FileMaker, I believe it has to do with two things. One thing is that they need to get the list, and it's, it sounds like it's just a list, but it's actually much more than they need to include some root certificates for those root certificate authorities and the types of certificates that they want to support. So there's uh, a lot of code that needs to be uh, bundled and, and put into the uh, FileMaker Go client. And uh, not only that, they uh, of course need to uh, test it and verify that it actually works. And I don't know if there's a hundred or two hundred different kinds of certificates you can get out there, but uh, imagine how much FileMaker would need to work in order to test every single one of those. So I think that's that's the main reason that the list is not very long, but there's enough in my opinion and also in, in price ranges that is reachable for pretty much everybody. Sure. Well, I mean, so what's the next step? Do we want to actually go through a demo of installing a certificate? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so installing the certificate on the server is pretty straightforward. So I have just opened the uh, folder, FileMaker server folder, and in the C store folder, you will notice there is uh, two files in here that is used by the FileMaker server. There's a, a server file and there's a, a root file. Those are, are basically keys that is unique to this server. So in order to uh, make this uh, process a little bit easier, I created this uh, certificate helper tool where uh, you can fill in the uh, things you need. So first of all, we need to make a, a certificate request. So basically, we need to order a, a certificate from the certificate authority. And in order to do that, we need to generate what is called a certificate request file. And in that file, we need to put in some uh, information. And uh, here we need to put in the server name. And in this case, this is an actually a server where this is LCS03. I put in the uh, our organization. I can spell it. Our organization name. Uh, choose the country code that your server is located at. Use the state if it's applicable. And then the location, which could be the area or the city. In this case, this is the city where we are located and our server is as well. So when you have filled out this uh, information here, you get a terminal command here. And uh, this is spelled out for uh, Mac uh, server. So if you're on Windows, just make sure that you are in the command prompt and uh, logged in as administrator, and then omit the sudo uh, from the command. But I copy it here, and let's just hide this little helper tool, and we are going into the terminal, and I paste the command here, 
And now it wants me to enter the password of this server machine. And what happened here was that FileMaker server created a server key that is a private key for this particular server and it created a server request. What? All right. We got a flag on the field. Uh, apparently, Taylor Sharp has thrown a flag on the field. See, that's what happens when we have Sharp FileMaker developers in the community who help review the content of these videos before they go public. They frequently throw flags in the middle of the video. So Taylor Sharp has thrown a penalty on us, and I need to clarify this permissions issue because if you don't know about this, this will completely mess up your entire process. The FM admin certificate create command that creates this certificate request file will not set the permissions correctly in this folder. So what Taylor noticed here is that during the installation of FileMaker server, this C store folder actually is owned and is defaulted to be owned by the FM server as read and write. But this FM admin certificate create command that is going to be run is actually run by the administrator. It's not run by the FM server. And so the administrator has to have read and write permissions to create this file in the C store, just like we just saw. It created these files in here. Well, that's because Klaus already had the permission set because he's already been doing this and practicing this demo, which is great. But the downside is that he forgot this little issue. Before you ran that command in the command line, you need to set the permissions in advance. So now we can continue on. So what is this? It, it looks very fancy, but it's actually nothing more than a uh, simple text file that you could open in a text editor. And here you can see it's basically the information we just wrote in the helper tool uh, combined with a pri private key and some other information from the FileMaker server, and then it's uh, Base64 encoded. So Klaus, just to help clarify this for everyone, this certificate request is what we're going to give to the certificate authority during the purchase of the certificate. So we use that list that we saw previously. Let me see if I can bring that up here. And that list is the list of approved companies that we can buy a certificate from. So we click on one of those. We bring it up and we go through the purchase process. And during that purchase process, we're going to somehow copy and paste or upload that certificate request, that block of text, provide that to the certificate authority, and they're going to use that block of text to actually generate the final certificate itself, which itself is another block of text, which we get to bring down. So I just wanted to clarify that, so not to interrupt, so go ahead. Yeah. So this is the content of the certificate. And back in the helper tool, it is possible to paste in this content if you should need it later on. So now I sent this certificate, and I will get a signed certificate back from the uh, authority. Then we just pause here for a second. So. Now we're ready. Now I got the certificate back from uh, the authority where I purchased the signed certificate. And again, it's basically just a text file that I got back in, in this manner, uh, actually in an email. So what I did was I took this block, which is the actual signed certificate. You can also paste it in here and have it for later on. And then I saved it as a text file where I replaced the dots with underscores in the name and then uh, named it .crt. It can be named differently, but this helper tool is assuming that you are naming it this way. So just in order to, to make it uh, fairly easy, we uh, suggest to copy it into the C store folder. And here it is now. So now we just need to install the certificate. And again, back to the helper tool. This is the 
command that will import the signed certificate and create the custom certificate by combining with the private key from the FileMaker server and also makes uh, the settings that is needed for the web server so it will use the same certificate. Again, this is uh, the Mac command and if you're on Windows, omit the sudo. Make sure you're logged in as a uh, administrator. So, now I just pasted the command and uh, pressed enter and normally you would need to enter the uh, root password of the machine but uh, we were fast here. So what happened here was that FileMaker imported this certificate, it created a server custom and it also did some settings uh, for the web server. And now we are good to go in the admin console you needed to have this require secure connection on. That is actually what is uh, turning on the SSL connection between the client and the server. And was then that, you need to restart the machine. Was that supposed to be on before we did this or after? Or can you be clarify well, when we turn well, it on? It actually shouldn't matter if it's on before or after. In this case, it was on before I installed the certificate. But in order to propagate the certificate and the settings, uh, FileMaker says that you just need to restart the database engine, but uh, in my experience and, and I have seen others saying the same, you need to reboot the machine in order to make sure that it is properly installed and propagated uh, throughout the entire machine. Okay. Now, when you installed here, did this also take effect for WebDirect as well? I mean, Exactly. It did? Exactly. So, so now we have just restarted the server machine and we are sure that it has propagated. So let's open up a uh, HTTPS because we want a secure connection to this server and uh, see that I'm using the full name, not the IP address or not localhost. It needs to be the fully qualified domain name that we gave it. And now we are going to WebDirect and here we are on the WebDirect of LCS03. If you will click on the uh, uh, padlock and show certificates and surely enough this certificate is named for LCS03.11.com and it's a Torthy primary root certificate authority and the certificate is valid and it expires 11, April 11, 2016. So that's a one-year certificate. You bought a one-year? Yeah. The one-year, okay. Yeah. Now yeah you, could buy a, a one you, year. you could buy a two-year or three-year. What do you normally buy? Do you recommend people buy it? Uh, well, normally I, I, I recommend to, or I recommend our customers to, uh, that, that we buy a two- or three-year uh, certificate because Normally, when, when two years or three years has uh, gone by, it's about time that uh, we look at uh, upgrading or updating or renewing their server hardware. Ah, yes. Well, that's a, another way of reminding them that they should upgrade to the newest version of FileMaker. Probably not a bad idea. Ex yeah, exactly. Except that we always sell the uh, license agreements. Luckily, so we don't have a lot of arguing about that. So one other thing, when when we have this in place and we have the certificate, and we can see here in WebDirect, it is it is valid. And uh, I could just log out here and say I want to go log into the uh, admin console, but it's important that you use the uh, uh, domain name of the server. And now we can see here, we are on this server and we can verify that, yes, it is verified, it's totally okay. And just one other thing in here is that in the general settings, the server name needs to be the same as the actual server name. So uh, you can't say it's my playing around server, ha ha ha, 
or whatever you want, you need to use the ex, uh, the uh, actual server name in here in the uh, FileMaker server admin console. Whatever you write here in the server description is optional. Well, that's a really good point. Are there any other gotchas like that? I mean, now's the time to let us know. What other little? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Things? Exactly. Well, well, there is an a, another one. If we uh, go into uh, FileMaker. Uh, client on the uh, actual machine itself, it can't validate the padlock down here. So we need to go to a client machine that is not uh, the same as the server. So I'm just opening a a file and I know you can't see it. Oh, again, there's another gotcha here. Normally we, you would, uh, like we do, often that we have a handful of servers in here and, and sure enough here is the uh, LCS03 machine but <clears throat> when you're using the view of local hosts it will connect via the IP address and not the domain name so if you do this you will not get the green padlock as uh, it should be so save it as a favorite host and use the domain name uh, the actual domain name instead of the IP address so uh, now we are just opening a file here that I used for some DevCon use and here you can see you have the green padlock and the green padlock indicates that this is a secure connection and it is validated via a valid certificate here. And you can also go to the uh, uh, data viewer, for example, and, and use the get connection attributes command that says uh, this is a peer certificate. So basically means this is a certificate between a server and client. The common name is what they call it. It's, it's the name of the server. The certificate authority issuer is TORTI and this is the uh, type of certificate that is used in, in this connection. And there is actually a, a couple of more GET functions that can tell you a little bit more about uh, whether it's uh, uh, secure or not. Well that's cool stuff. Hey, where do we get your uh, certificate assistant file? Where do we find that at? I guess there will be a link along with the video, but it will also be on our website. Okay, we'll post that. So we'll put big arrows down here. So look in the description of this YouTube video, and you can find the download for that. And if not, uh, then also look at the Data Maniacs website. <laughs> <laughs> and uh well this is cool stuff and it i tell you that file makes it a lot simpler i remember doing the um boy back in 98 and 99 and 2000 doing the ssl certificates and it was a bigger pain in the rear end uh without yep. that assistant file that makes it a lot easier well excellent work uh claus is great job with what you've done and this is really going to help the filemaker community so we're very pleased to have you on the team so. here. So in the future, we hope to have you on other videos at learningfilemaker.com and helping the FileMaker community at large. And uh, everyone, we look forward to seeing uh, Claus and everyone at the FileMaker Developer Conference this coming year. And for uh, Richard Carlton and learningfilemaker.com, we'll catch you next week.